The Nintendo 64 was certainly more of a revolutionary idea in terms of 3D hardware for a video game console. Back when Atari first started making their first system, the whole idea was to bring the arcade cabinets home and be able to play your arcade favorites, well, on your TV set at home. And the N64 kind of revitalized that, only this time with 3D graphics. The trouble was, in order to obtain these 3D graphics, there needed to be a lot of performance measures taken, as well as some cutting edge technology. And with an arcade cabinet, you have a lot of space in order to put this stuff in, but with a TV set console at home, you don't. So not only does it have to be smaller in form factor, but it also has to be aesthetically pleasing, and it has to be priced low enough so that the common person can actually buy this thing. Due to a lot of these cost-cutting constraints, while the N64 had some superior 3D technology in reverse to the PlayStation 1, certain things had to be done to, in order to save resources on the programming side of things, and also to make it technically feasible to make a coherent game. And one of these sacrifices was with textures and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Hi everybody, I'm James from Zygal Studios, and today we're going to be talking about the textures on the Nintendo 64. So I think a good first place to start is to explain what a texture in 3D graphics is. So typically in 3D graphics, a texture is some type of surface that can be wrapped onto a solid. The texture provides color information as well as some little details in order to effectively fill in that 3D image. So with the 3D solid and the texture wrapped around it, you have a full-blown 3D model. Now that being said, the textures are generally laid out in a flat orientation and need to be quote-unquote wrapped onto these 3D objects. And the trouble with this is that there's no perfect approximation for any way to effectively wrap a 3D texture because if these textures are flat, there needs to be some type of geometrical transformation that turns this flat instill image into a wrapped 3D object. If you think about wrapping something like a Christmas present, it takes some time to be able to wrap it smooth and tight and to learn the technique in order to do that. It's similar in 3D graphics. It takes a lot of computational power to make it look as smooth as possible. And that's why there's a numerous techniques in order to do this and each of them have their own unique trade-offs and attractions to them. Things like height mapping, bump mapping, normal mapping, displacement mapping, and there's a whole list of other different things that you can use. But the Nintendo 64 used something called MIP mapping. And essentially what MIP maps are, are pre-calculated optimized sequences of images. And each of these images are progressively lower resolutions than the previous. And the entire point of this is basically to allow for less computational resources in order to render the image when you have a 3D environment. Because when you have a 3D environment, there are things that are far away and close to the user. So a MIP mapping essentially has multiple images inside the texture file that degrade in quality and the farther away you are from that particular image in the texture it will put the lower quality image because the user can't really tell inside of this 3d environment so now that we have a clever way to effectively reduce render times on draw calls inside the system now we need a way to take that rendered texture and effectively approximate it around a solid there also has to be a way to connect all these MIP maps together, and this is called interpolation. So interpolation in mathematics is basically an estimation of constructing new data points with inside a set of known data points. And basically what this means in English is it's a way to approximate distances or approximate paths between point to point. And you can see where this would be necessary because if we're trying to connect all these different MIP maps together, and approximate how it wraps onto the object, we need to have some type of interpolation function. So by estimating this interpolation, uh, we are able to actually effectively wrap the 3D object. We need a form of multivariate or spatial interpolation needed for 3D, and there are multiple ways to do this, but Nintendo and Silicon Graphics chose something called trilinear interpolation. So trilinear interpolation is used in a three-dimensional environment and essentially approximates the value of an intermediate point at a local axial rectangular prism linearly. And essentially what that means is it just takes a set of 3D points and smooths out a distance in between the two sets of these 3D points. And the real beauty of this technique is essentially that no matter how close you get to the texture, it will look totally smooth. And this is something that actually Silicon Graphics showed off in their demo, showing how it was superior in technology. 
So now that we have some context on how the N64 actually handles textures and the technique it uses mathematically, we can think about how the hardware affects the actual appearance on screen. Only a 64 by 64 pixel texture could be used in the 4 kilobyte texture cache. But we're really trying to figure out why the textures look stretched and blurry, and really this is a artifact of linear interpolation, or filtering in this case. While linear interpolation does have some anti-aliasing qualities, since this is an approximation method, there's error associated with that, and the error can be quantified using Rolle's theorem if we're talking mathematics, but if you're talking about just a general approximation, it isn't going to be perfectly aligned and smooth, and this is a problem. So what do you need in this case? Well, you just need a more detailed texture. However, in this case, this is not very useful in terms of the 64. You can't really do that because you were very limited in terms of ROM space. ROMs were typically between 10 megabytes and 32 megabytes. In some cases it went higher, but all those textures needed to be crammed into that one cartridge ROM. So this means that you had to stretch the textures out or retile them, since they were in 64 by 64 tiles anyway, you could use the same texture over again in multiple spots. If we look at this footage I captured of Banjo-Tooie, and we look along the side of the mountain, you notice that a lot of these mountain sides are not only stretched, but they're also repeated tiles that you would have found somewhere in the ROM. These repeated tiles are then laid and interpolated into, inside of a 3D environment. And with the specific fill rate, you only have a certain amount of pixels that can be filled on screen at one time, so saving pixels in certain areas versus others was also a common practice. So not only is the texture cache an issue, but the storage medium is also an issue too. Why would you have a cache that could fit so many things into it if you can't store the amount of details of textures on the storage medium, like a cartridge, to actually display them on screen? And another thing was actually moving those textures into the right area. Now, while texturing is a linear process, you could essentially set up some type of scheduler that would chunk the process out linearly, and it was predictable, it still meant that the fill rate was a problem. The fill rate became an issue due to the RAM latency. Due to the unified memory architecture with a high latency RAM bus design, the fill rate was capped at a certain point. And this goes to show you that spending a little more money sometimes might be actually worth it in the design. Unified memory architectures generally only make sense when there's very high speed and super large memory areas. Not something like this. Spatial and temporal locality become a major problem on this architecture. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video interesting. The real answer lies in the fact of a multitude of things, as many things do in life. But I hope you enjoyed this video and can appreciate the stretch textures a little bit more on the Nintendo 64. This is James from Zygal Studios, signing off.